yes, yes, yes. Oh my God, that is such a big win. Wow, all right, so before I even get into tonight's game where the Flyers beat the Blue Jackets 5-1, uh, the first game of a home-and-home -home series, a very important home-and-home -home series, Flyers now move into third place in the Metropolitan Division. Now, the biggest thing from this game that I thought, I, I thought it was just a great game, great game all around. It, and honestly, I, I'm, not, I'm just going to rephrase that because it wasn't even like a big thing that was able for them to pick up a win here. They were phenomenal all night. There was a couple things that were a little iffy, uh, you know, some plays late in the first period in the second. I'll get into that in a minute, but I did not make a video uh, after last game because if, if you follow me on Instagram, I was at the, Fan the Phantoms game Saturday night. Uh, they lost to the Hartford Wolfpack in a shootout. It was a very good game. Morgan Frost had two points. It was a very enjoyable game. Uh, the Phantoms played pretty good, uh, despite, as I said, they did lose in a shootout. They played good despite losing. Uh, they had a couple chances in overtime. Alex Lyon made a couple big saves along the way. Sadly, they only picked up one point. Uh, but anyways, I was kind of tired after that. I ended up missing the whole Flyers game because of the 4 o'clock start. I had to leave my house at 4 o'clock to get to Allentown in a decent amount of time. Uh, so I was able to watch the game, walk around, things like that. Uh, it was only my second time being in PPL Center, so I kind of wanted to enjoy it. Uh, and after that, when I got back that Sunday, I didn't get home that night until around midnight, 1230. Uh, and I was very tired and I was kind of just, I just wasn't feeling making a video. So anyways, to get off of that, um, and again, it was, the Phantoms game was great. I was happy. I was able to enjoy it. Sadly, the Flyers did lose to Tampa Bay five to three. They put up a good effort. They were down three, nothing. Uh, then it was four, one at one point. And they ended up almost making a comeback, sadly. They fell short and they lost 5-3. Now, to get into this tonight's game, tonight's game was huge. It started, as I said, started a home-and-home -home versus Columbus, the team where going into it, the Flyers had 71 points, Columbus had 72. Columbus was on a five-game losing streak, only getting three points in their last five games. They lost tonight now. And the Flyers, they get a very important, very, very important. And this next game, since the Flyers won the night, is even bigger. You got Columbus again on Thursday in Columbus this time. And you might be able to sweep the season series against them and pick up another two very important points. So to even get into, into tonight's game, the Flyers, they had a pretty good start on like the last game versus Tampa Bay. They had a rough first period. They were down 3 nothing after that one. Tonight, they get they're, they get two goals and it, pretty early into the period. So they're generating chances early. And Columbus can't really get anything going. It was kind of both teams trying to find their way. And then Kevin Hayes gets one on really the Flyers main start to them owning majority of the puck possession in the first period. Farabee throws it along or along the goal line. Hayes goes to center in front for connecting, deflects off the Blue Jackets defenseman, hits for his Lincolns in the head, and goes in the net. It's a one nothing Flyers lead. It's a fluky goal. I don't care. It's one nothing Flyers. A minute, uh, it, actually the Flyers got two goals in a minute and two seconds. Uh, and Sean Couturier, he made it 2 to nothing on a breakaway. It was a bouncing puck that deflected through the Blue Jackets defenseman's legs, went right out to Couturier. Coots had a couple breakaway chances in Tampa Bay. I saw some of the highlights from that one. He wasn't really able to get anything off uh, shot-wise. He didn't get any shots on tonight, and it just slipped right through Mers Lincoln's 5 hole, 2 to nothing Flyers, and that was a big goal. You know, I mean, after that goal from Hayes, I'm like, oh, man, that, I, that was a fluky one, but hopefully they can continue that, maybe get a pretty one or, or something like that, maybe actually get one that was... I guess if you want to call it deserved, I mean, that was kind of just a lucky goal. But anyways, as I said, I didn't really care. It was one nothing, And then they get a goal like this. I'm like, oh, my God, this is great. So it's already 2 to nothing Flyers. They had a pretty solid period. There was only uh, nine shots throughout the whole period. The Flyers had six. The Blue Jackets had three. Carter Hart was, I mean, none of them were really high-quality chances. He made a couple of good saves. But besides that, uh, after the first period, it's 2 to nothing Flyers. They had a couple turnovers late in the period that led to, uh, I guess if you want to call some pretty fast breaks, but the, the Flyers' defense was able to shut that down pretty quickly, and it didn't really lead into anything dangerous, and there was no harm done there. They go into the second period, the fourth line, they're getting good pressure early. They had a couple turnovers, uh, but Hart was able to come up with some big saves. That Couturier line was out there for a pretty decent time. Couturier and Voracek had two or three turnovers on the same shift, kind of led to some chances. Hart came up big in the second period, and that kind of transitioned later. Uh, it was still pretty, I, I guess if you want to call it back and forth, both teams were getting their chances. And then the fourth line, again, they get rewarded for their efforts. They had a really good game, in my opinion. Uh, I, the only thing they were missing was a goal, and they got that goal here from Phil Myers. 
He centered it. Uh, it was a nice play from Sanheim down to Albe Kubel. He found it back to Sanheim, over to Myers. He shot it, went off the Blue Jackets defenseman skate, and went in. It's 3 to nothing Flyers, and they're able to get a 3 to nothing lead in a game where they're playing pretty good. And as I said, the fourth line, they had a couple of really good chances. The only thing they were missing, really, in my opinion, these last couple games was a goal. Uh, guys like Bunneman, Albe Kubel, Raffle, they were really good tonight, especially on the defensive side of the puck. They were making a lot of chances. Uh, and then the Blue Jackets get one later on the first power play of the game. It was a power play goal. And this was kind of one where I was just, I was, it, 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 it really was a nice passing play, but the Flyers were looked a little bit lazy on the penalty kill. There were uh, like three of the guys had one hand on their stick. I know you're supposed to do that, but if you're a defenseman that tight in the slot where Bjorkstern gets the goal here, you got to have one hand on your stick. And this kid, and he's like a second behind the play. And Bjork stands wide open in the slot. It's three to one that that uh, broke Carter Hart shot out. And I want to go back to something in the first period because this kind of scared me a little bit on the defensive side of the puck. Uh, Provorov blocked the shot and his foot went down. He did not get up right away. He was able to get up uh, and skate off by himself. Uh, and then he was out there the next shift. So thank God Provorov was not hurt there. That would have really, really hurt the Flyers. If he was, he's easily been the Flyers. Uh, number one guy this season. Some may even argue Matt Niskanen being number one. I know Provrov in his recent games, he hasn't really been playing as great. He had a rough game against Tampa Bay. I thought he bounced back pretty well tonight uh, after, after that little debacle he had uh, against the Lightning. But anyways, the Flyers, they have a two-to-goal lead going into the third period. They're up three to one. And in the third, they had a good start. Travis Konechny gets them on the board to make it four to one on a tip that was one hand on his stick deflected right through Ms. Lincoln's and Elvis was Elvis. He leaves the building. He gets pulled after that one, uh, after the fourth goal. And none of them were really his fault. It was kind of, it kind of was just like a wake up call to the team in front of him. Uh, and honestly, I wouldn't even really say that because some of the, as I said, some of the goals were pretty fluky. I'd say really the only goal that you can maybe say that was on the Blue Jackets defense was that second goal. And that was even a rough one because that bounced through the defenseman's legs. Kateria had the breakaway. But anyways, the Flyers, they have a 4-1 to one lead. And that was actually Konecki's 50th career point, point uh, and his 20th goal. Uh, and that's actually the third time he's got 20 goals. And that's three times in the last season. So he got it in the 17-18, 18-19, and now the 19-20 season. Pretty good for Konecki. He's turning into a stud, and I absolutely love the guy. 5-1, Voracek gets one on a power play. First power play of the game for the Flyers. Really nice play, Drew. He's on his knees. He's stick handling it. He gets it over Connect and he finds Voracek. He's wide open. He rips it by, uh, and it is a 5-1 Flyers lead. Voracek ripped it top corner, and that was all she wrote after this one. The Flyers, they get a 5-1 win. Carter Hart had some pretty good saves. I thought the Flyers had a good game, and that was also Drew's. Uh, that was Drew's 235th power play assist. Uh, and he now leads all time for the Flyers. He was tied with Bobby Clark for 234. He passed him tonight. So again, really good stuff tonight from the Flyers. A couple milestones were broken. And now I got the advanced stats from tonight's game. And also a big thing that I want to bring up here. That game was huge. And I know I said this a little bit earlier in the video, but this next game versus Columbus is even bigger. I mean, we, we all know Columbus is going to be coming out guns blazing in this next one. The Flyers are going to have to do something. Uh, they have beaten Columbus before. Back in November, they beat them 3-2. In Columbus, Drew, he had a goal, uh, power play goal in that one. Hopefully, Drew, Flyers, Carter Hart, they can come back in this next one, and they can pick up the all-important two points again and take four points away from Columbus. And now I got the advanced stats and the some of the other regular stats from tonight's game. All right, so you got the advanced stats here. I'm going to start out with the heat map. You got majority of the Flyers' chances really coming from the slot. That was like the main source of a lot of their chances. Uh, you had a couple different shots from the right side of the point, a couple down low. You have that Hayes goal on the goal line, and then you have those two goals in front, the other one off to the side. Uh, and then the Blue Jackets, they get a couple more. Uh, they honestly had a, a few more chances. Around, I, I guess you wouldn't really say in in uh, in the slot there. It was kind of really towards more of the circle, uh, a couple more towards the point. Uh, and then you move into the Corsi here. All right, so in the first and second period, both teams had an even 50% uh, at Corsi. And then you move 
to the third period where it was basically at that point it was already 4-1, 5-1 Flyers. Uh, so the Blue Jackets were pretty pretty much dominating. Corsi-wise, they had a 65.38% to the Flyers, 3462 which gave them the victory in the Corsi. But again, on the score sheet, doesn't necessarily matter. The Flyers, they pick up the all-important all two points. And now I'm going to move into the regular game stats uh, from tonight's game. All right, so the regular stats here, shots on goal, Flyers only had 15 shots and scored five goals. Uh, it's pretty unreal that that even happened, and I think that might be, I, I actually think that might be their lowest all season. I don't really think the Flyers care. They got five goals. It doesn't necessarily matter. Blue Jackets, they get 29 shots on goal. Faceoffs were 54% for the Flyers, so the Blue Jackets 46%. Power plays, Flyers were one for one, Blue Jackets one for three. Pretty solid penalty killing tonight by the Flyers after that one power play goal they gave up. Penalty minutes were 6-2 Flyers. Hits were 26-25 Flyers. The blocks were actually 18-16 in favor of Columbus. And giveaways were 10-8 in favor of Columbus as well. Uh, on offense leader for the Flyers was Giroux uh, with his ice time being at 16-45. Second behind him was uh, Scott Lawton with 16-05. And then to the defense, you have Provorov with 22-49. And pretty close behind him was Niskanen with 21-38. So, uh, my podcasts, my articles, those links are on my channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in the next one, and goodbye.